Immunotherapy is an approach for treating cancer that has gained a lot of interest and excitement in the last few years. Uh, because immunotherapy has proven to be effective in other cancers like melanoma and lung cancer, we are also interested in using that approach to treat pancreatic cancer. One of the important caveats is that cancers have to have um, mutations and make abnormal proteins that your immune system can recognize. And so for some tumor types, like melanoma, these tumors make a lot of abnormal proteins, and it makes it easier for the immune system to go after those kinds of tumors. Unfortunately for pancreatic cancer, many studies have shown that these tumors don't make a lot of abnormal proteins. So from the get-go, um, it's a bit challenging to, to target pancreatic tumors with an immunotherapy approach. Um, but we're still very interested. There are also another, uh, another sets of obstacles that I described a little bit in um, terms of the tumor stroma. So there are a number of obstacles in the stroma, whether it be the physical barrier or these myeloid cells which are trying to suppress the immune system or the T cells themselves, which um, are not activated. So while we are very interest in, interested in using immunotherapy to target pancreatic cancer, it's clear that there are a number of hurdles that remain in our way, and we really still need to, to do a lot of research to understand what those hurdles are, how to overcome them, how to effectively treat pancreatic cancer with immunotherapy. In the year 2017, the FDA has approved a record number of anti-cancer agents, I believe more than 27 uh, new agents, which is great for the field and for our patients. What was really a landmark is the first uh, approval by the FDA of an anti-cancer agent uh, with, with, with being agnostic to when it comes to the tissue. This was the approval of pembrolizumab in MSI high mal uh, malignancies, regardless of the tissue of origin where the cancer originated. It's great, it's with a companion test uh, in a specific patient population. Now, of course, this is led by probably colorectal cancers, endometrial cancers, etc. cetera, um, but there is a setup of patients with MSI high, which are pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Whether these are part of a Lynch syndrome, remember Lynch syndrome by definition are MSI high or not, we don't know. There were only four patients enrolled in that study, uh, and two patients have had response, objective response rate. Again, this is, remains a rare incidence in pancreatic uh, adenocarcinoma, but in my opinion, every solid tumor patient is a candidate to have the tissue tested for microsatellite instability, because MSI high will result in two uh, consequences. First, MSI high, and if you've not consider testing this patient for Lynch syndrome, this meets the Batista criteria. In colorectal cancer, at least, to consider genetic counseling and testing for Lynch syndrome. And the second, more importantly, in this, uh, immediately, is uh, the patient would be candidate for a checkpoint inhibitor. The only FDA-approved drug is pembrolizumab, but across community settings and university centers, we have clinical trials for MSI high solid tumors, uh, whether it's a single agent checkpoint inhibitor or what's more exciting is combination with other agents, cytotoxic, PARP inhibitors, or even some novel uh, other uh, checkpoint inhibitor as well. We had a dramatic change in how we do drug development. And for the first time ever, the FDA approved a drug based on a molecular target, microsatellite instability, regardless of what kind of cancer you had. This has never happened before. And actually, when this first happened, some of the pancreas cancer advocacy groups even went as far as to say, new drug approved for pancreas cancer. But we should pause, because the reality is that most pancreas cancer is not MSI high. Now, that doesn't mean don't biopsy, don't try to figure that out. But the reality is a very low percentage will be MSI high. And so at least for today, pembrolizumab or checkpoint inhibitors really do not have much role for the majority of patients with pancreas cancer. Lots of clinical trials are looking at that, of trying to combine or take other approaches. But for right now, I don't think pembrolizumab will be routinely incorporated into treatment simply because MSI high is not very common in pancreas cancer. As oncologists may know, pembrolizumab is approved for the treatment of MSI high or microsatellite uh, instability high tumors, and that includes tumors like pancreatic cancer. 
in our experience where we've sequenced, done genetic sequencing on um, hundreds of patients with pancreatic cancer, we understand that this subset of patients is very small. So probably less than 1% of patients with pancreatic cancer also have MSI high status. For patients who we identify as having MSI high status, I think it is reasonable to use pembrolizumab to treat those patients. My own personal practice is not to use it as a frontline treatment. Usually we'll use effective cytotoxic chemotherapy first. And if the treatment is either not working or the patients are getting weary of the chemotherapy, we would consider using a drug like pembrolizumab to treat those patients. It's clear for patients who don't have this um, microsatellite instability high status in the tumor that pembrolizumab is really ineffective, so I would never use it for such a patient. Even in patients who have MSI high tumors, um, my general approach is to try to enroll them into an immunotherapy study. So whether it's pembrolizumab or another checkpoint inhibitor in combination with some other um, immunotherapy uh, or immunotherapeutic agent. Um, that is still my preference, but in the absence of that, certainly it's very reasonable to use pembrolizumab.